Hello everyone, hope you are doing well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at censored versus sensorless brushless motors. We're ultimately going to be focusing in on how much of an RPM range does the censored part of the system actually contribute to the entire RPM range that is available within your setup. We're gonna be looking at this from a practical experimental approach here today and I'm gonna show you the amount of RPM that these motors can run without sensors. In order to attack this problem, we're gonna take a look at two brushless motors and see what the slowest speed that we can operate these motors without using any sensors. And then we're gonna take a look at this point in transition and why this transition point is so critical to us. And it's essentially accessing variable timing for censored motors as well as sensorless motors. And I'll explain a little bit as we go through it and you'll be able to see the program up there on the computer as well and we'll talk through the entire process process. Let's get started and talk about the first motor that we're going to use within the experiment. And this one is a TP power. It is a 2200 kV motor. and We're going to operate this on a 4S LiPo battery. This is important because if you do use a lesser voltage than this or a higher voltage, your results will be different. And this is based off of the setup as a whole, the type of motor that you're using, the ESC that you're using. We're going to use an XLX2 ESC here today. And the, of course, the battery that we're using as well. All of these components within one system ultimately determines what the result for you would be. So if you really wanted to know what it is for you and your specific setup, you would have to set it up very similarly to how we're doing that here today. So this is the motor, we're gonna get it fired up and we're taking a look at what the slowest amount of RPM that this motor runs at where it does not need any type of sensors. And we know it doesn't need sensors because this motor is a sensorless motor. And here you can see that it operates with this data log. We looked at the data log from the electronic speed control here and it shows us it's operating at about 2000 RPM. This is about 6% of what this motor's potential is with this setup. Running a 4S pack wide open is going to get you so much RPM and 2000 RPM is about 6% of that. Essentially what we're saying is if you had a censored motor, it's going to help you from about 0 to 2000 RPM. Essentially, you hit that 2000 RPM mark and you no longer need sensors within this setup. Now we can do the exact same thing. We can swap out the in runner for this specific out runner motor. This is a 525 kV motor. We're gonna operate this also on the 14.8 volt battery. This is a 4S LiPo battery pack. So here we're firing up that motor and you can see that it's idling now. We take the data log from this and it shows us that we are getting at about the 360 RPM mark. At 360 RPM, this brushless motor is locked right in with that electronic speed control. Both of those are in sync with one another. This ultimately tells us that beyond 360 RPM, you would not need any type of sensors. Outrunner motors are typically used in radio controlled airplanes as well as drones, helicopters, and in some cases, radio controlled boats as well. Now in all of these applications, it essentially tells us that a censored motor would be essentially useless to us, or at least a waste of space and weight within our application. At 360 RPM or less, and any type of propeller, there's going to be extremely low loads that that motor is going to face. It's going to be quite easy for that motor to get in sync with the electronic speed control and then power our radio control vehicle from there. And going back to our TP power motor, which is an in-runner high performance brushless motor capable of extremely high amounts of RPM. If we are racing our radio control car and we're above about that 6% speed mark, we essentially don't need sensors there as well. The only time that sensors are going to come in play is when we want to get that car moving from zero speed. If you do prefer to have that precision at slow speeds, that is totally okay. Let me know in the comments section below if you prefer censored motors or sensorless motors and for what application your preference is for. What I want to show you is even with your censored motor, you can access sensorless mode within your ESC. Essentially, your ESC is going to ignore all of those sensors sensors and operate without the requirement of them. Now this is huge within our system because it allows us access to variable timing. And that's the next part of this video that we're going to discuss. Variable timing allows for better efficiency and increased performance. 
areas that we're very interested in. The way this works is very similar to full size cars. When we have an internal combustion engine, those engines typically have variable timing within their valve train and variable timing within their ignition. It is because the motor or the engine in this case operates at different speeds, different loads, and as it experiences different speeds, RPM within measured at the crankshaft and different loads measured by the amount of torque that that engine's outputting, you do require different timings within these areas, both the valve train as well as the ignition. We could take that same idea and apply it with our brushless motor. As the loads and the speeds are changing within our systems, within our setup at that moment, depending on what we're doing, we do require different timings. And our electronic speed control is going to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our system here and how we actually program it. And I'll show you how simple it is to access these parameters. And of course, Course, this is for a Castle Creations electronic speed control. Here is the Castle Link software. I'm going to plug our ESC in here today to our computer. So this is the connection being made now. It's reading the information and it tells us that we have the Mamba XLX2 connected up to our computer. This is true, everything looks good so far. Now since we're talking about timing in this video, I'm specifically gonna go and select the motor tab and take a look at the motor type here that deals with two options that we can choose from. The first option is a brushed reversing mode and the second option is a smart sense mode for brushless motors. Now hopefully most of us are using brushless motors and in that case we have no option to make here, we must select brushless mode, which is smart sense. Let's talk about what smart sense means for Castle Creations electronic speed controls. Here we see smart sense is enabled by default within the programming suite. Here we have the asterisk representing the default options here under each drop down menu. It is true, smart sense has been enabled by default right from the factory and it uses this motor sensors to provide smooth starts, excellent torque, and low speed drivability. Once the motor is turning or rotating under very low RPM, this implies it seamlessly transitions to Castle's ultra-efficient sensorless mode with electronic timing. This is the variable timing that we were talking about. When running, a motor must transition between different load points and different timing advance is required for optimal efficiency at each. Electronic timing in SmartSense will advance timing automatically for peak performance during all driving conditions. So now let's take a look at how we can actually program our timing within this system here. So if we look at our options here, lowest zero degrees, low five degrees, normal 10 degrees, the mistake that we would have made is by saying that these are fixed timing points and represented in degrees. That's not the case at all. So let's find out what is going on in this sensorless motor timing. We'll click this question mark and it brings up the first sentence. This is all we need to be interested in for now. Motor timing advance changes the timing advance range used on the motor. The important part is what I'm going to highlight here and that is timing advance range. This is a range that you are essentially selecting so that the electronic speed control can work within that range and apply the timings that are necessary for the different RPM and loading of the motor and the setup. If we are crazy enough and select the highest amount of timing here that the ESC can provide, what it's going to do is use the highest range of timing and it's gonna apply the different timings associated with that range to our motor from the electronic speed control. So it's important to note that these values are definitely not fixed timings. And this is a radio control car electronic speed control that we are looking at right now, but the exact same applies to a radio controlled airplane using the Castle Link software. Castle has been doing this for over a decade in my experience where I'm seeing these values as a range, but often on the forums I see it being denoted as degrees of timing, and that's simply just not the case. That's how easy it is to select variable timing within a Castle Electronic ESC, just by simply leaving it in its default motor type mode and assigning the sensorless timing that you require. 
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.